Well, welcome back for part two of the WD engine uh, rebuild. Um, back in the shop tonight, uh, last video you saw, we got the low end on this uh, 201 block 226 rebuild uh, put back together. Uh, so that means tonight we get to focus on the upper end. Uh, probably the first thing we'll do is get the oil pan uh, put on, get all that buttoned up, and then head over and start getting the head and all that situated. So we'll flop over to the time lapse like we did the last video and just kind of watch some of that go together. And uh, if there's something that's important, I feel like, then I'll flip over to a video and uh, spell that out. So here we go. All right, so first I'm getting the oil housing installed on the side and getting those lines connected. And then we flip it over and get the gasket kind of laid out. I just want to make sure everything uh, laid out properly. I kind of changed my game plan here. Then I went through and cleaned out all the threads on the top. All right, I wanted to interject here just a minute and just speak on the importance of cleaning out the threads. Uh, anytime you're doing engine work, you want to go ahead and just run run a tap through all your threads, open them up, get all the dirt and junk cleaned out of them. Um, it's very important when you go to do your torquing. Um, I just want to show you this. This is the second time I pulled that tap out, but all of this dirt and junk was down inside that one bolt hole for the head. So I could potentially bust that block if it's tight enough and I'm putting enough torque on it, I could compress that and, and, and crack it. So. It's very important to go ahead and clean it out. I should have done that before I got my sleeves and pistons in there just because of the dirt. So I'm using a shop vac just to suck that stuff up out of the way. So I've got these four here done and we'll just be sliding on down and getting the rest of those uh, completed. So if you don't have a tap and die set, Harbor Freight's got um, a cheap set. You know, they're not gonna last you that long but it'll be enough to do what you need to do whenever you're doing any kind of engine work so just wanted to point that out all right back to the assembly piece finished up uh, cleaning out the head uh, bolts got my gasket set down and now i'm ready to set the head on top which i did here went ahead and got my bolts in place started working on the uh, thermostat housing Got that installed and sealed up with new thermostat in there. All right, so I've gone ahead and, and got the push rods in place. I have not torqued the head yet. So I was gonna wait on that because this front head bolt right here holds the bracket for my power steering. Um, so I was gonna wait, but in order to go ahead with a rocker arm assembly, I've got to get that center line torqued up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just torque the whole head. Um, this bolt here will be the only one I'll need to remove at a, at a later date when I mount up the power steering bracketry. Um, so really won't be that big of a deal. So uh, let's slide over here to the bench real quick. And here are the uh, torque locations. You can just start with one and proceed on up. The um, larger bolts, which I believe are the, uh, I think they're three quarter, whatever size they are. We're going to torque those things down at 90, um, foot pounds. And then on the three eighths studs, which are three of those, we'll be doing those at 25. So the three eight studs in our diagram here are 13, 14, and 15 and the rest of them will be at 90 foot-pounds. So we'll go ahead and get that torqued up, and uh, then we'll be ready for that rocker arm assembly. Okay, so we're getting the rocker set on, and went ahead and got the bolts and got those kind of tightened down in place. Made sure the uh, back side of those is lined up with your push rods. Put the front cover on over the governor. Now I believe I finished up one one oil line that ran up to the head. 
Now I slid over and started putting on the manifold, new bolts and manifold gaskets. Carburetor slid in place. And then I got the um, oil pan gasket in place for that to dry overnight. And we'll have to speed us up on the process the next day. And then the front pulley. Okay, so we're to the point uh, to adjust the valves and the uh, manual doesn't really tell you the order to do them. Uh, it just tells you to bring number one up on top dead center and your clearance hot should be 12 thousandths. Um, it doesn't tell you a cold clearance either. So I've reached out uh, to some of the guys on the Facebook form and got some information. And what I've been told is if your cam lobes are down, and I've still got the pan off and I've verified that, if your cam lobes are down and you've got your cylinder, what you think's on top dead center compression stroke, then cam lobes down, that's true. Then you can adjust your valves on one, two, four, and six and I'm adjusting those to about 13 thousandths my filler gauge only goes to 12 thousandths and then it jumps up to like 15 so I'm just making a little bit more than 12 we'll have to adjust them later once everything's warmed up and retorque anyhow so not too concerned about that while I had it up on the compression stroke and I got the valves adjusted it was a good time to set my distributor so for me i wanted the nameplate which is taped off right here from where i primered it to be straight out um, and then i wanted this to be my number one uh, plug wire going to uh, number one cylinder so i figured out on the cap here roughly where i needed to be whoops and uh so it's right here and then i had to lift up as you saw on the time lapse i had to pull the distributor up i had to twist it around until i got in the next uh, notch or two down here on the worm gear and then i got it set to where i want it so now that i've got it up on top dead center compression stroke cylinder one I've got my timing now set. I went ahead and tightened down my bolts there. I'll probably make a few adjustments once we get it running just to tune it up. Um, so I'm, I'm at that point. Um, the next step is we're going to make one complete revolution. And I'll just stick a wrench on my uh, front crank pulley. When we do one full revolution, that's going to bring number four up on top dead center and then i can repeat the exact same process just in reverse order so counting from the back side we'll go one two four and six which you can tell right now four and six are open those valves are open at this point so once i make the 360 degree revolution from front to back valves four and six they will be open and these valves will be closed so at that point i'll be able to make my adjustments so uh, once i was uh fed the information on how to do that it makes complete sense um on the 301 diesels uh, the book tells you that so it'll tell you to bring number one up on top dead center and then it'll say go adjust valves you know intake valve on cylinder two and and four and six maybe whatever it is but the uh the 201 for the wd and wd45 226 engines that it, it did not tell me so anyway i've got that information at hand now we'll make uh we'll make another 360 degree revolution with the crank and then i'll go ahead through the other procedure and do it from the back and at that point we should be uh, adjusted out i've got my timing set 
Um, and really, at that point, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide my valve cover back on. Um, one prep work item that I did to my valve cover is I went ahead and put on uh, the top part of my valve cover gasket. I just used some Permatex up underneath there. Put me a couple of small clips to hold it in place and uh, just let it set, you know, in my vise like this overnight. So what that's gonna do is help me keep the valve cover gasket in place. As you guys know, sometimes you set them on there and they want to slide in. So this should take care of that piece for me. Um, I don't wanna put Permatex on this side and on the top of the head right yet. If I do so, then I'm gonna tear it up whenever I go to check my clearances when it's hot and to retorque the head. Um, so just one little item, save you on a valve cover gasket, but still be able to keep your oil contained whenever it does go. So I just have to set that on there and go ahead and put my bolts in the top and we'll be good. Uh, likewise, I did similar on the pan gasket. I've got it in place. Um, and I'll just put put the bolts in there just to keep everything lined up. And I had this motor flipped over overnight. And so it's uh, set up now as well. So I don't have to worry about that thing shifting around. So once we get the valves adjusted, I'll put the valve cover on. We'll flip it back upside down. And I'll go ahead and put that uh, pan uh, back on it and get it sealed up. And then really at that point, uh, the only thing left is the water pump and the power steering unit. And we'll be ready to slide this thing back in. So anyway, let's flip back over, get these jowls, uh, valves adjusted and move forward. All right, so I ran through the process on adjusting the valves and got those where they need to be. I was just checking for my top dead center on that number four cylinder. Looking at the travel as it's moving up and down, I stopped it when it went to its full stroke up. Valve cover went on. Now we're going to put the angle iron on that I used to lift that engine out with. If you recall in that first uh, video on the engine removal, I used a piece of angle iron to go right in the uh, bolts there. So just getting everything cleaned up, set on, and tighten down so that we're ready to lift it up with the hoist and then now I'm getting prepped for that pan gasket or the pan installation okay so we're now ready for the pan gasket uh, installation or the pan the gasket I've already like I mentioned earlier got it adhered to the bottom of the block with that set overnight so it's uh, nice and secure I went through it each of the link leaking points uh, right here and I've put some silicone uh, at all four points uh, the F gaskets underneath that I know it looks like there's quite a bit there so that's going to squeeze out I'm not worried about it um, one thing that uh, is good to do is immediately when you get your gaskets is go ahead you can use a round can whatever this is happens to be an oil filter changer put those gaskets in there so that they got that uh, kind of loop once I take these out I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time they're gonna want to start stretching out but I, I'll be able to lay it over uh, right here on this front cover bottom part of the front cover to seal it as well as the back now one thing to note you do not want to put silicone or whatever you're using on these curved pieces that cork gasket needs to have the abilities to move around and expand and, and contract once it starts getting roll up next to it it's going to want to draw up a little bit so um just keep that in mind i've seen a lot of guys just goof this up right here just to hold it in place well uh, that's not a not a good idea there's some clips and i had a couple of them i've lost them there's some clips that you can use to hold these on the pan um i don't have them so i've got to do it kind of the hard way so i'll take a little bit of time here but we'll have the time lapse running um uh, and we'll watch this uh, pan go on. Also, I've got all of my bolts that I'm gonna be using over here with my lock 
washers on them and they're ready to go. Uh, that way, once I get my paint in place, I can go ahead and just get two of them and use those. Um, or more than two, several of them, but I'll be able to use those for kind of a guide to get that pan situated. But already having this cork gasket down and in place on this bottom part of the block is gonna make this next process a lot easier for me. Um, if I was trying to put this on and it's sliding around, I'm trying to get my holes lined up, it can be a pain because I've done it both ways. So that's one little tip for you. Um, I've also went over here to the pan. I've got it had in my vice by the drain plug and I went ahead and just put some uh, silicone on the inside there and then once I set it over here on the gasket then it's going to be nice and sealed up so anyway that's that uh, let's flop over to the time lapse and we'll get this thing installed all right so grab the pan over off the bench on the other side there put my uh, cork gaskets around the curved parts and set it on gently and just worked each side. I had to use a little screwdriver to work that gasket in place and then just got all my bolts tightened up. All right one more thing I wanted to point out is on the pan I was using new hardware and you can see I had I believe a one inch uh, bolt there that's five sixteenths thread and then this one here probably a three-quarter just by the looking at it um, if you're putting new pan bolts on that's fine but you got to keep in mind that uh, you've got uh, not 100% sure what it's called but it's for your oil uh, pressure right there and it's going to require that short uh, that short bolt in that in that pan gasket. So I put my uh, other one in. Of course, it wasn't going to tighten up. So make sure you keep that. If you toss some other ones, keep that short one. Or you have to cut one down. But uh, just another tip. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, we've got the pan uh, installed now. Um, showed you a couple tricks on that cork. Uh, worked out pretty good. Got it in there nice and sealed up. Now again, that thing's going to move around. There's no gaps on it. Uh, I believe the measurement from one side to the other is four and three quarters of an inch. So you want to check that. Uh, mine was good. Got all my bolts in. Uh, got my sealer on there. Put some sealer in the corners right here, the leak, no one leak spots. Uh, so that's good. We'll let that uh, set up overnight. Got everything in and torqued. Um, kind of torqued. I, I use my drill for that. So uh, may, may double check my torque specs, but I'd say they're probably around 18 to 20 foot pounds. And I know that the torque on my drill is a little bit more than that, so we should be fine. Um, really at this point, we're just going to let that engine uh, set like that overnight. We'll let all that uh, uh, silicone that's in there that I used, let it get set up and I've already got the bracket on the top for my cherry picker to connect to. You saw, we put that on if you weren't sure what that was. If you didn't see me remove the engine, you wouldn't know. But it's just a little puller. I will have a couple brackets that hook up to that, go to my cherry picker, and I can lift that motor right up. So we'll let that set cure overnight. Uh, tomorrow, we'll flip that engine over. I'll go ahead and pull it off of my engine stand and then at that point I, I can install the flywheel and the uh, clutch and pressure plate uh, on the flywheel I didn't get video of this but earlier um, I replaced the ring gear so I got a brand new uh, uh, ring gear starting ring gear and then I've got a new uh, pilot bearing as well and throw out bearing that will go on the tractor. So we've got a little bit of work that we can do on those two items. Um, the tractor is close to being ready to receive the engine back. There's a couple things I still want to clean up on it. Um, I'd really like to maybe roll it out and power wash this uh, inside section 
one more time because it's going to get paint and honestly there's really no better time to do that than right now before i get this motor in there so probably going to do that before the engine gets set in uh, they're calling for some snow uh, this weekend so i need to get that done prior to that while it's still uh, halfway decent outside and we'll get that thing ready and then we should be able to slide that engine in and see what happens so anyway hey appreciate you guys watching uh had a lot of comments and likes and things like that i appreciate those um i try to get back with you as soon as i can on that if you've got questions and uh thanks for watching hit like and subscribe and have a good day